and you can take it over, James. Thank you. Okay, uh, great. Thanks a lot. Um, so welcome back, everybody, to, to day two of the school. Um, uh, today, we, we have just kind of an hour slot to mainly just to follow up the things that we discussed yesterday. So I have kind of a few slides, and I, I think there'll be time also for uh, any questions to kind of sort out uh, any lingering uh, issues or further details. So again, for today, um, let's use the same Slack channel that we were using yesterday to, to ask questions. Um, we went through after the school yesterday uh, all the remaining questions, and I, I think we answered them all. If, if you do have a question on the Slack that didn't get answered, um, just ping us again and we'll get back to it. Okay, um, so I asked you at the end of yesterday for one kind of hopefully simple homework exercise, which was to build Jetscape with the external packages enabled. Um, so just to remind you, when you download Jetscape, there are a few um, modules that don't kind of ship with Jetscape itself that you need to just run a couple extra scripts to um, download them, and then they will nicely integrate and compile with Jetscape. Um, so uh, you should have downloaded these few packages list listed here during the, the prep instructions, actually before yesterday. And then what I had asked you to do is just um, compile Jetscape using these CMake options. So adding these flags here to turn on uh, the, the compilation of these, these optional packages. Um, and so can uh, let's, let's try to um, do another poll here. So, if this worked for you successfully, uh, could you uh, click the yes in the Zoom uh, reaction or Zoom icon? And if it didn't work for you, if you could put a no. I, I didn't see any problems coming up in the, the Slack in the meantime, um, but if you do encounter a problem, it would certainly be useful to post your, uh, your error message. Um, so let's give people a moment to uh, uh, get their answers in. Um, and if we, um, either Michael or Abhijit, could you um, report yeah, I, I just, how many people are? I just see 12 check marks. I don't know if that's what I'm supposed to be counting. I see. Yeah, that's the, the any any check marks or the red X's that you see. Yeah, um, it's it's up to 15 now. Okay. Don't and um, I just want to tell I just want to tell everybody that don't uh, cancel once you you put a check mark. Just leave it up there. It, the the chair will just cancel them out once the poll is over. Okay. okay, so let's give let's give one more moment since we're just getting started here. Maybe people are also trickling in a bit late, but um, yeah, it's it's good that it seems at least so far this people were not encountering some problems with this. Okay, so um, assuming that there are not any no's that have come in, um, let's, let's go on. There's just one thing I wanted to mention, which might be helpful to you at some point when you're compiling Jetscape and using different options. Um, so it's just a tip for your future use. Um, sometimes uh, you might notice a problem after running CMIC. This is not anything specific to Jetscape, but just something that... Uh, uh, that can be helpful to, to know in general. Um, sometimes CMake, uh, it, it uses some caching of, of uh, things in the build directory. And so if you really encounter a problem that you can't really understand why it's giving you an error, um, one tip to troubleshoot is you can always remove entirely that build directory. So following these instructions uh, here and then really make a fresh build. Um, so you can keep all the other parts of Jetscape, source directory, everything else, uh, you can just remove that build directory and start fresh with that. Um, if you suspect there is some problem that you're seeing, um, and sometimes this can happen if you 
you know, configure something wrong and CMake caches some wrong file, uh, you need to clear that out. This is an easy, quick way to do that. Okay, so let's um, let's actually test now whether this actually worked. Um, so now that we have downloaded and built these external packages, um, we should be able to run some code that actually uses them. So I just want to do a quick uh, test now um, that that all of you can actually do this um, to confirm that the, the building all went successfully. Um, so I want you to um, execute these two lines here from inside the Docker container. Um, so you just go to your build directory and then we'll run the run Jetscape command again. Um, but we, we want to pass it now a different um, user XML file. So here is just a different um, sample XML file. We're not really going to look into the physics at all here, um, but just go ahead and give that a run. Um, and when you do, the, the only thing I want you to look at is really the initialization info. So you should see again, there's um, a bunch of printouts when uh, Jetscape is, is initializing that says Jetscape determine task list, and it will have a list of initial state, hard process, and so on. And in particular, I want you to check that you see um, a line that says added music to the task list. So that's one of the packages that we added for the hydrodynamics. And a bit uh, below that, you should see also the soft particleization added this ISS uh, module to the task list. Um, so as you give that a try, um, if actually first could we have the, the chairs clear out the, the responses? Already did. Perfect, thank you. Um, so now once this works for you, once you see these two uh, modules appearing in the list, if you could again enter yes to confirm that it works for you. If it doesn't, uh, put in a no. Um, and I'll note that at the end of this script, you know, you don't really need to pay attention for now what's happening after these printouts. I think the script will um, quickly give some error message that it didn't, some parameter is not set appropriately or something to this effect. That's okay. Don't worry about that. We're not trying to get into the physics now, um, but really just test that your setup is good to go. Uh, so the important thing is just that you see these newly downloaded and compiled um, modules that, that should appear now. That means Jetscape knows about them and is using them. So let's give, um, let's give maybe two minutes or so for people to get that going. And I should mention there, there are a couple of other module, optional modules that are also available. We haven't downloaded all of them. Um, so you can, uh, um, you can see the, the full list that's, that's available. Um, uh, if, if you just look further, say in the master XML file or um, uh, um, I, I think all of them are listed in the slides yesterday at some point. Okay, and how, how are our responses looking? I see 12 check marks and no X's. Okay, good. So it seems that no, we have 14. Uh, no, one X. Oh, okay. okay, let's let's then wait another minute to, to try to get the, get everybody up to speed. I just wanted to remind people there's also a, in the reactions that is a slow down or speed up button as well if you need uh, the speaker to slow down.
Okay, so I, I think let's let's go ahead and move on. Um, if if uh, there are if there is anybody who is still struggling, um, just go ahead and post your problem in the Slack channel, and we'll get back to that uh, to to help you work through it. Um, so one one other thing I wanted to just quickly mention today um, is that uh, you can check out specific releases of Jetscape. Um, so if you if you go um, to this web page here linked at the top, the GitHub page for Jetscape slash Jetscape slash releases, um, you will find that there's a whole list of uh, 15 or 20 different tagged releases of Jetscape. Um, now, in general, the most recent of these, so currently the most recent is 3.4.1. Um, that's equal to the master branch of Jetscape. So if you just um, check out uh, Jetscape, um, you will get this latest version here. Um, but it may be at some point that you're interested to look at a specific version of Jetscape. And that could be because um, at some point, uh, uh, Jetscape was used to compare to experimental data and a specific version of it was used. And you might want to go back to that exact version and look at, say, some other observable. Um, uh, or that there could be a variety of other reasons. You might, you might want to do that. Um, and so by going to this page, you can take a look at the different releases. You can see also what has changed in the different releases. So we try at least to, to write which modules have been updated or bug fixes or other improvements. Um, and if you, um, if you want to actually check out one of these other uh, releases, um, you can do this uh, pretty simply with Git as well. Um, so here, just now in your um, command line, you can do this uh, most easily from outside of the Docker container. Um, if you just go into that Jetscape repository, so CD into your Jetscape repository, and you type git tag like this, you'll see a list of the various tagged versions of Jetscape that exist. So it should look something like the following, starting at version 1.2, going up to version 3.4 or 3.4.1. You might not see the 3.4.1, depending on when exactly you, uh, um, you first checked out Jetscape when you're preparing here. Um, if you uh, update Jetscape, do a git pull, or if you just had downloaded it again, you would see this full list here. Um, and then if you want to check out a specific version, uh, there is a syntax here that you can do to git checkout. Uh, you can use this tags slash the version that you want, and you can create that into a new branch of, of Jetscape. Um, so I won't really go into further detail about how to manage branches and things like that with git, um, but uh, if, if you're interested to do that here is kind of the starting point that uh, should, um, or you can literally just copy this line if you want, that will get you going uh, to check out any specific tag of Jetscape uh, that you like. Okay, so um, go ahead and, and give that git tag a try to make sure that you can see these things. Um, you don't have to actually check out a specific version if you don't want, you can, it's completely up to you. Um, that's not something that we will be needing for the school, but um, if you want to play around with it, certainly go ahead. Um, but I, I do want you to give a check with this git tag, whether you actually see um, that that you are that you have a, a essentially up to date version of Jetscape that sits at, at three point four. Um, so yeah, so let's let's give a couple of minutes to give that a try. So I see one uh, message being posted to the Slack um, from the last step uh, when when you were um, running this script um, after hopefully downloading the, the external packages. So let me just go back there for a minute. Uh, um, so if, if in this step you're running the script, but the 
the message does not properly say that music is added and ISS are added. The problem is that you probably missed uh, running these download scripts here. So this, um, this block uh, of commands that's listed here under downloaded direct prep instructions, you want to go and CD to this Jetscape external packages directory and then make sure you run all four of these uh, dot slash get music, get ISS and so on. Um, and then you should try rerunning those CMake commands uh, to, to build Jetscape with these options turned on. Um, so there, there should, you otherwise will see a message uh, um, which, which will tell you that music is not installed, for example. And so you need to, you need to download it in that case. Um, okay, and if in the meantime, the chairs could clear out again the, the responses, that would be great. I cleared them already, and I think we're getting already responses ah, okay. to per the perfect, ability perfect. to pull a, a specific branch. Okay, uh, great, great. You are one step ahead of me. Uh, good. And they're looking uh, positive, or are there some difficulties? It's a uh, six, so we're we're about half the typical number of checks, and I think people are still proceeding through it. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, great. I don't see any complaints yet, but. Yeah, I think what happened is that um, when the people ran the previous job, they still have the hydro part running. And that's what took a while. They didn't, they didn't stop it after seeing that the uh, hydro I was see, attached. I see. Okay, yeah, it, it, uh, in principle, I think it should finish quite quickly, but yes, it, that, that very well could be. But yeah, let, let me just once again encourage people that if you're... Um, uh, okay, I see, I see the message now on the Slack also pointing that out. So thanks, uh, thanks for clarifying that. So yeah, in that case, let's let's just wait a couple more minutes here to to let everybody get uh, catch caught up. In the meantime, it seems we certainly will have some time today just open for questions. So um, it, you can start thinking if you have any questions you'd like to, to ask in this, in this moment. Um, it's a good time to kind of check in about technical things, if there was something unclear from yesterday that you didn't understand, or even something in general about, say, the design of Jetscape. Um, now's a good point to get into to that side of things um, so that for the rest of the school, we can really focus more on the physics. So while we're waiting, um, there is another question in the Slack, which I think is a little bit, you know, on the installation side. Um, somebody has trouble. Um, it seems they cannot find the file CLIDL.cc, which I think is CL on CL disk. Right, it's it's while the building is going on, so it's one comment back from where we were reading before. Do you see it, James? Um, yes, yes, yes. Yes, from Saraswati Pandey. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm not immediately sure what. Uh causes that issue. So yeah, let's, let's try to follow up on the Slack. Um,
Okay, so yeah, that, that we might have to continue following up a little bit. Um, okay, I see uh, a question also about after you've checked out version 3.3, .3, how do you get back to say 3.4? How do you switch around between these branches, which is a very good question. Um, so if you, for example, had run this command, um, git checkout with this, some tags here, say you did tag slash v3.3 dash b v3.3. Um, so the, this dash b 3.4.3.1 that's listed here, this last uh, part of the command, uh, what that's going to do is going to check out a new, um, what's called a new branch in git. So in your Git repository, you can have various different um, branches that you can just switch between, which will sit at different um, different points in history of the code. Um, and so um, you can, um, if you just type in your terminal git space branch, that will show you a list of all the branches that you have available. And so if you had written v 3.3, for example, here, um, then that should show up in that list, uh, as well as um, um, any other branches you may have had, including your original one. Um, and then you can uh, um, you can basically just type git checkout, and then the name of the branch you want to switch back to. Um, and that should that way you can kind of easily hop between these different uh, different versions. Um, so yeah, so you can give that a try if. Um, if that's uh, not uh, not working, then just write in some details on the Slack and we can troubleshoot a bit more. James, while you're waiting, there's another general question on the Slack about how modules write. Uh, okay, I see. So the, the question is, how does a module write output? Does it always call Jetscape writer and interact with the several FMC and ASCII writers, or does it open its own root file? Um, so the, the writers will, the, the output that, that gets written. Um, uh, so when we ran Jetscape, we generated um, a different file depending on what type of output format we activated. Um, and so if we had activated the HEPMC writer, um, then that would have been uh, the only one activated. And if we had only activated, say, the ASCII writer, that would only be the, we would only see the ASCII output file generated. And so th this is really the, the way that uh, the modules write to the output files, um, only in those specific formats and those specific files. Um, I should mention it's possible that you can write your own output format if you want. Um, you can kind of follow some examples uh, that are already existing there of how to do that. Um, it's you know will take a little bit of involvement, but it's really not so uh, not so bad to do um, if you do want to kind of customize what the, the format is of the output. Okay, so let's maybe, um, do, do we have, how, how do our responses actually look for this git tag now? Are we kind of up to our? We reached more? 10 check marks. Okay, okay. Any any X's present? Nope. Okay, um, so let's let's just go ahead and move on. So I'm kind of kind of rely that all of you will tell us if you're having some problems or put in no or slow down or something if you want to, to go slower. Um, but let me just let me just um, move ahead briefly. So, just another tip for your information: um, if you go to the GitHub page, you can um, you will see this these buttons in the upper right hand corner. Uh, there's an option that you can watch uh, or unwatch the repository. What that means is you'll be notified of new releases if there is uh, new releases coming. And then if you click that drop down button, there's a couple options even of kind of the frequency with which you want to be notified. Um, so if you really want to kind of be kept up to date with the, the Jetscape releases, um, that is the way to do that. 
Um, this is just again on the standard uh, Jetscape slash Jetscape GitHub page that you've seen linked all around here. Um, so that's really all that I wanted to say for today. So, so it's just a, just a short session to kind of follow up. Um, and so now um, we still have about a half an hour until the, the next um, session begins. Um, so I just want to open up to any questions. Um, you, can, you can either write them in the Slack or raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Um, here we can really kind of open the scope to um, anything related to the, the content of, of yesterday and today. Um, I, I don't really want to get into the, the physics side of things too much, at least not in detail now, since uh, I want to save that for the other uh, sessions that will be upcoming and lectures that you'll hear. Um, uh, but, but yeah, so with that, um, let me thank again the, the TAs for all of their work uh, yesterday and, and uh, this morning, um, as well as the, the chairs and organizers. And of course, uh, for all of you for following along and, and participating. Um, so, so yeah, let's let's see if there are any questions. Um, I see there may be a couple in the Slack still that we can uh, try to get to. Um, otherwise, yeah, I feel most free to raise your hand as well. Okay, so I, I'm not really seeing new questions on the Slack or any raised hands. I'm not sure if, if, if the chairs see any, please let me know. Um, if it's not the case, uh, we can also just end this block early today um, since we got through the content. Um, I'll still, of course, be around the Slack and, and the other TAs and helpers will be around the Slack as well if you do have further questions. Um, so I'll defer that then to the chairs, but I think if, if there is nothing else coming up, we could probably uh, end this part early today. Let's just wait a couple of minutes to see if there's any more questions. But, mm -hmm. And then we can just switch over to Slack, which is probably more efficient. People could just raise their hands and then you know you could even ask the question verbally now, right? Mm -hmm. All right, since it doesn't seem like there's any questions right now, I think we can go ahead and stop the recording.